Choosing the right companion can help propel your party, your clan, your army, or even your kingdom to new heights. However, in the game of Bannerlord, there are multiple companions in which they all have different skills. So how do you determine which companion is best for your situation? There are different reasons why you get a companion. One, you could just have them in your army, which then some skills aren't needed. You might want them to roam around in your kingdom taking care of looters and others, or you might want to propel them to their own clan. So in each situation, skills come into play differently than you normally would in other situations. So therefore, the skills that you choose are going to be important. That is why this list is going to be very subjective, because there are different roles that you might want to put these companions in. There will always be a little RNG when it comes to choosing companions. When the game rolls them, their skill numbers are about the same. However, where they put the focus points might alter from game to game. You might have two in medicine, but on the next one, there could be a chance you might have three. Or somebody that has one in scouting and tactics, the next game might not have any. So while most of the stats are going to be the same, those focus points could be different from game to game. So there is a little bit of RNG involved each game. Now this list, as I said, will be very, very subjective as I've taken every situation and tried to encompass them all into just one list. You could literally make four or five different top tens for each different situation. However, if you just want to know what maybe the 10 best are, so if you see them, you're going to instantly grab them, then this is what I have tried to accomplish in this list. My list will encompass three things, and that will be the starting skills, the available focus points they have, and also their character level, which is something a lot of people don't think about. If you have two characters that have about the same stats, yet one is level 17 and one is level 11, the 11 is going to get you a lot more points later on. And you don't have to take time to level them if you don't, because they're going to gain levels on their own. For order of importance of skills, these how I rank them. Although yours could differ whether or not they're just going to be in your army or they're going to be fighting outside of your army. The last thing that I think is the least important is leadership. While it does offer that morale and it does offer some really good perks, I think out of the five that you're going to focus on, that is definitely the least important. Next would be steward. Now, this could be a little bit shocking to people, but once again, for the most part, steward is going to serve one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to give you additional troops. You're going to be able to get a little bit of steward, to, but to focus three or four points into steward, just to maybe get yourself about 30 or 40 more troops, isn't going to be a huge difference when you deal with the next three skills. Next will be scouting. This is very important if they are not going to be in your army. I have done some testing with Flavius on this, and the ability for these parties to see other people is really low, and they will not be able to see a lot of looters or other parties in time. However, by raising that scouting, they can see a much further away to go after the targets that they can win and to run when they're outnumbered. In a close second, I would put tactics. If, once again, fighting outside of your army, tactics is vital to winning simulated battles. I cannot stress it enough. Strat Gaming just did a guide on tactics, and increasing that, the difference to how many you lose or whether you win, is just gigantic. So, a very close second is tactics. And number one will be medicine. With death on 
or off, it doesn't matter. Firstly, with death on, it's going to give a less chance for that party leader to actually die in combat. That is the worst case scenario you want to happen. However, with death off, it's still going to make sure that more troops survive instead of get killed in those fights. And then when the fight is over, it's going to allow them to recuperate faster. So medicine skill gives less downtime than anything else. So I have weighted all of these skills in that order when it comes to choosing which companions are the best. Coming in at number 10 is the Kuzite Knowing. Now looking right off the bat, you're not going to be impressed with this at all. And if you're somebody that is looking for somebody right off the bat, you're probably not going to be happy. But when you look and see, already has one point into scouting, one point into tactics, and then you look at the level, only level 10. There is a lot of levels that you are going to get very, very quickly. Number nine, a non Aserai Wanderer. The Aserai Wanderer is very high level with more skills. However, the non Aserai Wanderers will have skills in different areas. So they're not going to be all the same. However, most of them will be sub level 12 and will have focus points already into the skills that you need. So once again, whether you're building them up or you need one right away, they are really ready to go to run their own group and they are going to get levels extremely fast. At number eight, we have the Empire scholar. Once again, you do not look at this and say, wow, this is pretty darn good. Although scouting a point, tactics a point, those are what is needed if they're going to run on their own. And they're only level 10, meaning they are going to level super fast. Number seven, Sturgeon Willowbark already has points into medicine and into scouting and is only level 10. So once again, somebody that can go and get a few levels and become absolutely amazing. This one can fit both scenarios, whether you need one right now or you want to go ahead and work one. Number six, Kuzai outcast the kuze outcast already has points into tactics and leadership which are the two hardest to raise up and the kuze outcast will almost always be level 12 about to hit level 13 so you have a free point coming immediately if you go ahead and you take three or four points that they can get pretty easily leveling you can get that into the steward the medicine, the scouting, and they can be somebody that you can use right from the start or if you want to build them up. They are very flexible as a companion to run a party. Number five, Kuzite the Great Falcon. You can see already has points into scouting, tactics, leadership, and depending on the role, could already have focus points into steward and medicine, and he starts out at level 12, while also having good riding and bow, which means he's already got plenty of points everywhere, can still get more with leveling, and because he has bow, he's going to be able to train super easy on looters or anybody else. Number four, Batanian Healer has points into scouting and medicine, and is also level 10. Already has great medicine, which is used in all areas. Has scouting if you need it. But being only level 10 can get so many points that it allows you to customize the healer to whatever situation you want. Number three, 
Asarai scholar, by far the highest medicine of any companion in the game, which is, of course, our number one skill. And depending on the role, can have a couple focus points in those other important skills. Also, only level 13, so can still get a few more levels. But by far being the best healer in the game, automatically puts the Asurai near the top of the list. Number two, Empire Surgeon. While the Empire Surgeon does not have as much medicine as the Asurai Surgeon, where they differ is in their levels. Most of the times, the Empire Surgeon is going to be three levels lower. Therefore, the Empire Surgeon is going to be able to get more points in the other areas that they currently do not have. And that is why the Empire Surgeon gets the nod just barely over the Asurai. Number one, Blandian Bitter Draft. Already has Steward. Already has a decent amount of medicine. Is only level 11. But also has charm and trade. So if you want to make them an emissary, they're going to gain a lot of EXP fast. Because they already have high charm, they're going to be able to succeed more than anyone else. And if you want to go ahead and make them a caravan master, they can get trade to level as well. With just a few points into scouting or tactics or leadership, they are really going to have the most points out of probably any other companion in the game. And all around, Bitter Draft is going to be perfect for virtually anyone. I know this list is going to be very subjective to people, and I probably could have made four or five different videos for each different situation in the game. There's going to be no right one answer for every single person. Therefore, if you have one that I might have missed, or there's a reason why you like one better, put it down in the comments so other people can see it and they can see your reasoning behind it so they can be well informed about that companion that I might have missed. Until next time. Take care, and thanks for watching.